of the things that people really don't expect when they get a dog is the amount of time that it takes to train a dog. So putting the time in to practice and work with your dog every day is vitally important in giving them the practice that they need to get good at what you want them to do. Just because they've done something in one situation or another doesn't necessarily mean that they know it well or they'll behave in all situations. So it's important to take the time to practice and to change locations and change environments and even change handlers so the dog learns to listen and behave in all environments in all situations. So it is a little time consuming and you know, making sure that you have a little bit of time every day to practice will really make the difference. At A Dog's Best Friend, one of the many services that we offer is boarding training where we take the dog and we live in a home with a private trainer and we work on behaviors in the house. You know, one advantage of working with boarding training or doing boarding training is that your dog gets trained to a high level much faster than any other process. Having a professional trainer work with your dog every day ensures that your dog makes the most progress that it could possibly make in a short period of time. It's very, very different than us working with you one-on-one -on -one in your home and trying to teach you how to train your dog step-by-step -step. or a group class where you're with a bunch of other dogs and a bunch of other people and you're trying to learn how to do this as a group. You know, those methods are effective, but they're much, they're much less effective, but more difficult for people to learn in that type of distracting environment than one-on-one. -on -one. And with the dog and us, one-on-one, -on -one, it's much easier for us to make the progress and, and accelerate through the training process very, very quickly without being held back by the owner's handling skills. Our boarding training program is run out of a private home. So your dog would come and live in the home with a professional trainer and we would work on all aspects of training, not just obedience, but in behavior solving, behavior problem solving as well, like house breaking, chewing, jumping, play biting, jumping on the furniture, running outdoors, things like this. The types of behavior problems that most people are really most interested in fixing. Very few people send their dogs to us really for sit stay. They're more focused on house breaking and house behavior and things like that. So we work a lot on teaching them to go outside and go to the bathroom. We teach them to ring a bell to ask to go outside. We teach them to play with toys by themselves, to play with toys with us, to sit automatically for attention and not to jump up on people and to wait for permission to go through doors along with a lot of other things as well. Positive dog obedience, positive dog training is founded on the principle that dogs are motivated by certain things like praise and affection, treats, toys, play, things like that. So what we do is we control the resources that our pets want and we give them what they want when they give us what we want. So we use a lot of positive motivation and if we don't control those resources, for example if we give them free praise and affection all day, they're not really as motivated by praise and affection. If we're giving them a bunch of free food, if the food bowls down all the time, then they can kind of pick and choose when they feel like being motivated by treats. And that becomes a little bit of an issue. Motivation drops, which means performance drops as well. The best part about using positive techniques when it comes to working with your pet is you get performance when your dog is motivated by positives. You tend to get compliance at best if you're using negatives. Overall, Pavlov plays a large role in this. So if you're using positive to train, your dog likes to train, and you like to train. It's something that's fun for both of you. If you're using negative techniques, it's something that your dog doesn't like, and something that you probably don't like either, so neither one of you are gonna really have a lot of fun. Dogs tend to learn with negative techniques that, well, this is the least that I can do to avoid being punished, versus how, can I perform this behavior better to get more reinforcement and to make it more fun? So we really see a huge difference in using positive techniques versus negative techniques, mostly in the performance level of the dog. The best way to know what's going to work best for your pet is to observe him in different situations and see what he likes, what makes his tail wag, what makes it stop, what you know is happy for him, or you know, what makes him happy, what gets him excited. Some dogs respond much better to one technique versus another. So if we try different things, we really watch and observe what our dogs are doing and saying to us, we'll understand much better how to motivate them. What makes boarding training work is the follow through with the owners once the pet is returned to them. It's very, very important that once we've trained their dog that we work with them and we teach them how to work with their dog as well. 
just because we've trained them and the dog is doing a really great you know, behavior for us, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to do the same thing for you. You have to make sure that you do the same thing the same way. You have to follow the same pattern that the trainer used to train their dog. And if that doesn't happen, if the dog doesn't recognize what it is that you're doing, it's not going to perform the same way. So both have to be trained, both the dog and the handler. It's a dog-handler team that really make this work. So that's vital.